Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to module 5 of the course Time Dependent Quantum Chemistry. Uh, in this module, we will go over the uh, numerical approach to solve TDIC. That is the practical thing which we are going to uh, learn for the first time in this course. Now, uh, we have already understood uh, in, the, in the first module that when a potential does not have any explicit dependence on time, so potential does not depend and that is the way we are we have been assuming. Uh, in uh, in the, the, there are problems in time dependent quantum chemistry where potential will be dependent on time, but that part will be discussed later. So far we are saying that the potential does not depend on time, if it does not have dependency on time then um, one dimensional Sorringer equation should look like this. This is we are quite familiar with this form and we can solve this equation with the help of variable separation method. We have used this variable separation method before and um, in this method the eigenvector and corresponding eigenvalues of the quantum system before the onset of time evolution they are called stationary states. Uh, we can we can get those eigen uh, states and eigen vectors from this uh, time independent Sorringer equation. So the basic idea is that to in order to solve this TDAC, we have to first get the stationary states and the state stationary state of wave function and stationary state energies from the time independent Sorringer equation and that is the state before the onset of the time evolution. In this uh, and, and we get a set of solutions, we, we, we have understood that think about particle in one dimensional box when you have solved the time independent Sorringer equation you have got multiple solutions like this way. Similarly, uh, for any quantum system, it is time independent uh, uh, Sorringer equation will give you um, a set of solutions and uh, here n denotes the uh, nth eigenstate. So, it, n is the nth eigenstate and once we get that uh, solutions from here, we can get the time dependent um, uh, eigenstates which is nothing but multiplying uh, the stationary states with the help of uh, by this uh, time dependent phase factor that we have understood. And, and as a general solution which means that if the time evolution is going on between 0 to t time. So, at any time t, let us say t 1 time, within this time scale, within this time interval, let us say time evolution is going on. Within this time, at any time t, if I have to uh, present the wave function that will be presented by the linear combination of these states and where C n is the time dependent expansion coefficient which will control what is the contribution of each of these functions to the total wave function, time evolving wave function. So, 
uh, that's the way we have seen variable separation method and its uh, its uh, um, usage in time dependent in, in solving TTAC. But we have to remember that if the potential has an explicit dependence on time, if the potential is let us say V x t, here instead of V x we have let us say V x t. In that case variable separation method cannot be used anymore. In addition to that, so this is this is one concern we have. Second concern we have is that um, obtaining the solution to the TDSC via eigenvalues and eigenvectors may not be always practical. So, because so if I want to get a solution of TDAC with the help of Eigen values and Eigen vector in terms of that it may not be practical because a very large number of states are needed or because calculation of these states are too expensive. And in that case it is convenient to compute the time evolution of a given initial state directly without making use of a large number of eigenstates. So, the, so, so variable separation method is a good idea, but it may not be practical all the time. So, we need more general approach to solve this TDAC and the general approach to solve this TDAC is to use the time evolution operator this is called time evolution operator. This ut is representing the time evolution operator. What it does? It is actually um, we start we start from an initial state which is psi x 0 that is at t equals 0 what is the state is this is t equals 0 state at the initial state. And then we monitor the system as a function of time with the help of this time evolution operator which is an exponential operator and uh, in this module we will find out uh, what are the properties of this time evolution operator and um, what how numerically one can implement this idea so that using python programming one can find out at different time how the wave function is evolving. Once we know the wave function at a particular time we will be able to find out its average position and many um, experimental observables. We remind here that this form this time uh, evolution operator this this form that this, this, this is a general solution of TDAC actually. We uh, in the in the last module in module 4 we have seen that uh, how we have got this uh, expression for the time evolution operator. So, let us proceed and uh, we will we, before we uh, represent the numerical implementation of time evolution operator we will go over the general properties some of the general properties of time evolution operator because that will help us understand uh, the, uh, the meaning of this time evolution operator different properties will help us understand or, or numerical implementation also will be much easier to do once we understand uh, the, the meaning of this, this expression. So, this expression following the I have psi x t any time I would like to find out the wave function that can be done if I know the initial wave function and then employ one time evolution operator on it. 
this is the time evolution operator. So, the first uh, property of time evolution operator is that this u t equals e to the power minus i is called time propagator time propagator because because it's, it propagates the wave function in time. So, if I know the wave function, if the initial wave function that is at t equals 0, if initial wave function is known and its Hamiltonian is also known. both are known then one can find out one can find out the wave function at any later time. So, that is what it means. This is an exponential operator and we have already seen that uh, in, in chapter uh, in, in, in the previous module, module 4, we have seen that this equation psi x t equals e to the power minus i h cut t by psi x 0. This equation comes from as a solution of as a solution to the TDSE because remember at some point we uh, said that this operator is equivalent to age and this part came from TDSE in the derivation and that has been explicitly shown in uh, in in the uh, in, in module 4. This is an exponential operator and because it is an exponential operator it has to be expressed using a Taylor series expansion we, which we have used already in uh, module 4, but here we are just mentioning uh, to collect all the general properties. So, how do I express this exponential operator? This is going to be nothing but summation of m equals 0 to infinity minus i h t by h cut divided by m factorial which is nothing but 1 plus minus i h t by h cut plus 1 by 2 minus i h t by h cut whole square like this. 
I have infinite terms. So, that is the way we are going to express uh, this exponential operator. Time evolution operator is reversible in time and this reversibility is an unique property in quantum mechanics will prove that how it is reversible. Um, if I consider delta t time advancement then that has to be written as minus i h by h cut and if I want to go back in time then it is going to be minus delta t and that is going to be i h delta t by h cut. So, if I try to evaluate what will happen if I first go back and then come back acting on psi x 0. So, I am just taking the product of these two uh, time evolution operators. If I do that then I will be able to get i h cut delta t by multiplied by to the power minus i h delta t by h cut psi x 0 that is nothing but psi x 0. So, what it suggests? It suggests that first I am making an time advancement then what I get I am making one backward propagation in time. So, one forward propagation one backward propagation in the end giving me back this wave function that is why it is reversible in time. This is quite different from our real life experience. In real life experience we cannot go back in time we have to always move forward, but here I can go back in quantum mechanics with the help of this time evolution operator I can go back in time. So, uh, my system will again evolve to the uh, initial state. Time evolution operator is an unitary operator which means that I will be able to write down I will prove it, but before I prove that I will be able to write down this expression this equality inverse is going to be equal to its adjoint that is the definition of unitary operator which we have seen in um, in the in module 4 in the previous module. So, what it what it means it is inverse is equal to its adjoint. So, we will prove that we'll, one can one can prove it very easily if I try to find out it is power minus i h t by h cut inverse that is going to be to the power i h t by h cut which is which can be written as uh, we, with the help of uh, evolution uh, Taylor series expansion we will be able to write down 1 plus i h cap t by h cut plus half i h cap t by h cut whole square plus like this we will be able to write down this inverse of this operator. Now, here I mention one one important thing this is nothing but 1, but we are giving with a cap to show that the entire addition entire term is representing an operator. So, this is an 1 operator 1 operator is nothing but multiply by 1. And uh, uh, to to so so make the to to make the notation correct here every term we have made to be an operator that's why we are giving this cap otherwise it's just one 
So, we will now look at the uh, the adjoint how does it look like e to the power minus i h cap t by h cut it is adjoint it is adjoint is going to be 1 plus minus i h cap t by h cut plus half minus i h cap t by h cut whole square plus like this. So, entire term I have to consider adjoint and we have learned from the previous module that if I make adjoint it is going to be 1 plus adjoint is going to be h adjoint t by h cut plus half i h adjoint t by h cut whole square like this and because h is an Hermitian operator h is an Hermitian operator h is actually an Hermitian operator. So, I can write down it is self adjoint which means that it will be equal. So, this term this adjoint sign will go away because they are equal and the moment it goes away this term and what I have got here this term are equal that is why this equality holds. So, uh, unitary uh, but a time evolution operator is an unitary operator we will see that uh, we have been saying in many occasions in this course that um, for the to, to explore quantum dynamics we need to uh, have a uh, wave function which is normalized initially and it will remain normalized over all the time when you are exploring the quantum dynamics and that is called norm preserving. So, first thing we have to check because we are evolving time we are evolving we are monitoring the evolution of uh, wave function in time we have to understand that whether when I employ this unitary operator on this function whether I am preserving the norm or not that is most important part of um, uh, of quantum dynamics uh, before exploring quantum dynamics. So, we will check it first. So, we will see that if psi x t is represented as e to the power minus i t by h cut psi x 0 then I can consider it is absolute value square square of its absolute value that is going to be e to the power plus i by h cut multiplied to the power minus i h uh, cap t by h cut then psi x 0 that is nothing but psi x 0. So, what we see is that it is at t equals 0 its norm and at t equals t time any time t any arbitrary time t during the uh, time evolution its norm is going to be equal. So, that is why we can say this is a norm preserving we can explicitly prove it as follows norm are represented by this double lines vertical lines which is nothing but we have seen the definition of norm uh, in the previous module that is nothing but psi star x t psi x t d x to the power half that is the norm definition of the norm. Now, I employ um, time evolution here. So, that is going to be e to the power i h cap t by h cut psi star x 0. Here I have removed this negative sign because this is 
of complex conjugate part of the wave function. So, this is this part is represented here and then other part will be represented as 1 my minus i h cap t by h cut psi x 0 dx to the power half. So, I will rewrite little bit mathematical trick will help me get to the point we are trying to make here e to the power minus i h by h cut psi x 0 the entire thing I have clubbed them together and then uh, placed it uh, under this star which means that entire thing has to be uh, complex conjugate of this term and then remaining part I am keeping it here i h t by h cut psi x 0 dx to the power half. So, this is uh, I can I can write down because I can I can take the adjoint. So, if I take the adjoint of this. So, it is going to be minus infinity to plus infinity e to the power i h t by h cut e to the power minus i h t by h cut psi x 0 star psi x 0 dx to the power half. So, this is nothing but I have now psi x 0 star psi x 0 minus infinity to plus infinity So, we are using uh, making use of unitary property, unitarity property of the propagator. So, what, what is going on? Its norm is preserved because it is an unitary operator and what, what, which step we have used this unitary property in this step. You see this term has been taken here. How did we go, get that? Because we said that this um, uh, we have proved that this uh, time evolution operator inverse of the time evolution operator is actually it is adjoint. And, uh, adjoint the definition of adjoint being an adjoint I can take this uh, 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 operator from here to the other side and 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 if we take that then that is going to be inverse of that operator and that is that is exactly we have taken this part and this part is inverse of one in one another. And so, so because it is an unitary operator its norm is preserving. So, that is something which we should uh, remember. So, as a result uh, normalization con uh, constant does not change during dynamical evolution of the quantum system. So, these are the 5 properties we have uh, shown uh, so far and um, we will uh, stop here and uh, we will present the numerical implementation of time evolution operator in the next session.